Hello everyone and welcome to this new video. I hope you're doing great. And today I've decided to share with you a bit of a Q&A about 10 things you may know or you don't know about me. But as always, please subscribe, share your comments, uh, tell us what you want to see. Four balls juggling next time, why not? And the first thing I'm going to say is that when I was a kid, I didn't want to be a race car driver. What I wanted to be is a four by four driver in the DZ and being a gold digger. I wasn't interested about the gold. I was interested about driving the 4x4 into the desert, the dunes, on the sand, completely off-road with my best friend, Imre. It would look for the gold and I would just be driving the SUV. <laughs> Another funny one, back in 2004, Osher Sleben, Formula Renault, Euro Cup. I mean, funny, sort of funny. I thought the race was over, so I lifted off a throttle and uh, started my cool down lap and someone behind me crashed into me. The race was not finished. There was one more lap. The guy on the side, there was no radio obviously back in the day, so we had the, the pit sign, he got it wrong. So it was one lap too early, and the previous lap I saw lap one, so obviously it was the last lap of the race, but it wasn't the last lap of the race, so I got crashed into and uh, didn't do a good result. At the end of 2009 or early 2010, I was uh, thanks by Renault, and I wasn't going to be in Formula One in 2010, so I didn't know really what to do, and I wanted to become a chef. So I went to cooking school open days and, uh, and one day I was just going to be 23 or 24. I was told I was too old to start a cooking school. So I went back to racing. But many, many more years later, I was still passionate about cooking. So with my own, we actually wrote a cookbook. 46 recipes you would probably have one of them if you were coming in and have dinner or lunch at home. So I still, I'm still passionate about uh, about cooking, but uh, obviously never went to that school. Went back to Formula One and I kind of thank them for telling me no at the first time. I was born Swiss. My mom is French, so I got dual nationality. But when I started racing back in uh, 2000, I was driving under a Swiss license. I even entered A1 GP for Switzerland, but that race suit was never worn. And I tell you why. End of 2005, I'm French Formula One champion. And at that time, I still have a Swiss flag on my car. I needed some support to carry on my career. So I went to see Renault for the Renault Driver Development Program. Renault told me that they weren't interested in a Swiss driver for the future of Renault and Formula One. But I said, but I'm also French. And from that day onward, they told me that I was going to be French for racing all the time. So I had signed like a couple of weeks before for the A1GP Switzerland team. I never got the chance to compete there, but I kept the race suit because it's a cool souvenir. My grandfather was vice world champion of skiing in 1915 Aspen. His dad used to be a bobsled pilot, was 14 times Swiss champion, I believe. My grandfather was many times Swiss champion as well, competed in two Olympics, finished seven, eight in 48 and 52, but he was vice world champion of skiing back in 50s. So I'm obviously born on skis, uh, I love skiing. And I'll tell you one thing, know that I live in Miami, Aspen, Colorado, is not that far. Probably next winter, I'll be up there skiing, remembering my grandfather passed away a few years ago, but gonna go and ski those slope and uh, think of him. Talking of famous, I'm on one of the most watched video on YouTube, Dangerous, David Guetta, the clip Dangerous for his song. I was part of it and I was, I'm actually on the podium of that clip. If you watch in details uh, with James Purefoy, David Guetta, I finished third of the race. I had to let David win, uh, obviously. But that was a crazy experience. It was really cool to discover a little bit of behind the scene and I had no idea and I was pretty much blown away by how much work it was. I was driving the cars, obviously, doing the, the videos, but I was on the podium and I was uh, actually showing David how to spray champagne and that was, uh, that was pretty cool. A few years ago, 2019, I believe, I entered Fort Boyard. I know it exists in, in a lot of countries. I don't know how you pronounce it in different countries, but in France, Fort Boyard, and I entered the game. And they ask you, have you got a phobia for snakes, rats, mouse, spiders? And I say, yeah, I've got no idea. I've never really met any of those, so I don't know. And then we go into the part where the animals are getting into. And they put me in that phone booth. You know, I kind of sit down, I'm on the phone waiting for, uh, for Père Fouras, the grandfather, to ask me a question so I can find the answer. And they start filling up with water. So I'm like, yeah, that's fine. I'm just gonna, you know, breath, come back down, pick up the phone and answer the question. That was all good until they throw about 10 snakes, water snakes, into the telephone booth. And at that moment, first of all, I used all my worst French 
bad words that I know and realized that I had a phobia for snakes. Absolutely horrible. Since that day, I don't want to see any snakes near me. My dream car. That's a question I always have. What's my dream car? And it's not a Ferrari. It's not a Porsche. It's not a McLaren. It's not one of those crazy fancy ones. My dream car is a Lancia Delta Evo 2 from 1995. My dad had all the Lancia when, when I grew up from the first one, which I believe 88 to the last one, 95. That's the car that uh, I want in my garage. So if you haven't seen the video about my garage, go on and click on it, you know, see what's in my garage. And you can see that there's, there's a dedicated space that it's free. It's gonna be for that car for sure one day. For now, I only have that one that I need to build, but definitely that's on the list. I want that car one day. That's my dream car. I also wrote a book with Mario, Facing Death. Facing Death, it's kind of an autobiography crossed with a love book because, you know, Mario has got a chapter, I've got a chapter. It's obviously, we speak about the 29th of November, 2020, my Bahrain accident, but we also speak about some fun stories back in Formula One, back in my early career, IndyCar, the new discovery of the US and so on. So yeah, if you have a bit of time, you can find it on Amazon and please let me know what you think about the book because that means a lot to us.